What's happening everyone, my name is Alex and welcome back. In today's video we are checking out one of the best phones that Google ever made and surprisingly enough this is also a budget friendly device. So this right here is called the Pixel 4a and um, you should be able to get this phone for around $350. But you can't exactly buy this phone anywhere at this time because it's sold out everywhere. And that kind of goes to show you that people are starting to get tired of all those um, $1000 phones. Phones that don't really bring anything new compared to the previous generations. Now, the design of the Pixel 4a may not be as premium as the design of the Samsung Galaxy S20, let's say. But this phone is a third of the price. So we still get a design that's good enough for 2020. The screen finally doesn't have those massive bezels that we used to have with the Pixel 4, 3 and 2. So the screen looks good for 2020. This is also a very reliable phone, a fast phone, not to mention that we have one of the best cameras available on any mobile device. So for $350, this phone is quite amazing. I've even done a camera comparison between the Pixel 4a and the iPhone 11, and the iPhone 11 is double the price, and looking um, through the comments under that video, most people do seem to prefer the pictures taken by the Pixel 4a. So once again, it kind of shows you how good the camera on the back of this phone is. Now, the back of this phone is made out of plastic and, well, I guess it was made out of plastic for the Pixel 3a last year, but with this one we get this matte finish that doesn't show fingerprints as bad and it doesn't seem to get scratched. So I'm almost about to say that you can use this phone without a case. Now, I do have a case for it, I have a Google case for it, and the case does look super cool, but um, it makes the phone too big and too bulky. If you keep the phone like this in your pocket, you can barely fill it to the case, mm, it's kind of big. We also have a physical fingerprint scanner, and personally I'm a big fan of physical fingerprint scanners, and mostly because they work better than um, in-screen fingerprint scanners, not to mention that whenever you're picking up the phone from your pocket, you already have your hand on the fingerprint scanner, and the fingerprint scanner works better than, well, 99% of um, in-screen fingerprint scanners, if you ask me. So once again, I'm happy that we get um, a physical fingerprint scanner. We also have two speakers. So one speaker at the bottom and one at the top. And the speakers are some of the best speakers that I heard on any mobile device. And just to give you a quick example, this is a sample so you can hear how on those two speakers sound. And if you don't want to use those speakers, well, guess what? We have a 3.5mm audio jack at the top, and that means that if you have some wired headphones, you can use some wired headphones with your phone. Something that doesn't happen anymore, and, well, most phones that I've been seeing over the past year don't actually have a 3.5mm audio jack anymore, but this one does. So, on the front here, we have a 5.81 inches OLED display. The resolution on this screen is 1080p, but the screen gets bright enough to be used outdoors, and I think it's a beautiful looking screen, mostly for a phone this affordable. So, I don't really have anything bad to say about um, the screen. So, I think the phone actually looks way better than the more expensive Pixel 4, or the Pixel 3, or the Pixel 2. So, probably the best looking Google phone that we got so on, um, so far. So the Pixel 4a is powered by the Snapdragon 730 that's paired with 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of internal storage and of course it runs Android 10. Now the Snapdragon 730 may not be as fast as the Snapdragon 855 or 865 but trust me you can do anything that you're gonna do on a, a phone that's using the Snapdragon 865 and just as good. Maybe not as quick, maybe it's gonna take you like half a second longer to do it on this phone. But this phone should be more than enough for anyone. It doesn't matter if you're on social media, know, taking pictures for Instagram, if you're scrolling through your feed on Facebook, or if you're playing games. You're gonna be able to do everything that you do on this phone. Now, the other day I was playing Call of Duty and I got to play for about two and a half hours, I'm gonna say, and after about an hour and a half to two hours, the phone was pretty hot. And I started noticing that the phone was um, dropping frames. So whenever I was um, playing that games, there was definitely some throttling um, happening because the phone was slowing down. But that's the case with pretty much all phones. Unless you have like a gaming phone that has a dedicated fan inside, the phone will get hot whenever you're playing games. 
So I don't think this does worse or better than any other phone with a much more powerful CPU. You may notice a difference with this CPU if you are um, editing some amount of 4K files, for example. But for everyday tasks, you should not have any issues with a Pixel 4 at least in my experience and the apps that I use. Since the Snapdragon 730 is also more um, power efficient than other more high-end CPUs like the Snapdragon 855 and 865, you're also gonna get pretty decent battery life from this device. So the way I use the phone, um, that includes some gaming, some YouTube videos, some Chrome, some Facebook, some Instagram, I'm always um, able to get between six and seven hours of screen on time. Now, that may not be the best that I've ever seen. I mean, with my Huawei P40 Pro, I usually get about eight to nine hours of screen on time. But once again, for a phone around $350, you should be able to make it an entire day without any issues. I mean, if you're on the phone more than seven hours a day, you should probably get off it anyways. But yeah, the battery life on the Pixel 4a is definitely better than the battery life that you'd get on the Pixel 4. Now, depending what phone you're coming from, there may be some downsides to having um, one of these more affordable phones like the Pixel 4a. So one of those things is the fact that we don't have wireless charging. So if you're used to wireless charging, well, that's not happening with the Pixel 4a. And um, this phone cannot do 4K at 60 frames per second. A lot of other devices can do 4K at 60 frames per second, not to mention that to the front camera, you can only do 1080p. So if you like filming yourself with a front um, facing camera a lot, you're gonna have to do that in 1080p with the Pixel 4a. But aside from that, this phone is not gonna feel like a budget phone for anything else. It is extremely quick, the software is very well optimized on it. Um, it takes beautiful pictures, it looks good as well. So the Pixel 4a doesn't feel like a budget phone and it's better than a lot of other more expensive phones. So if you're looking for a reliable phone that's taking the best pictures out there and is cheap, the Pixel 4a should be the one to get. And in my opinion, Google should just stay with these kind of devices. I mean, I don't really need the Snapdragon 865 in any of my phones. I just need a phone that's affordable and that performs good. Sure, it may be nice to have that ultra-wide lens, it may be nice to have a telephoto lens in certain situations, but the one camera that we have on the back of this phone does more than okay in a lot, a lot of situations. So the Pixel 4a is definitely a phone that you should consider if you are um, tired of spending like a thousand dollars on a phone. Alright guys, if you do have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you did like the video, don't forget to press that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.